Well, as we continue in our teaching and understanding of the clash, <clears throat> clash of two kingdoms, we've been going over uh, our There it goes. There it goes. Um, as we've been going over what's happening in our world around us and where we are today and how do we engage uh, in what's happening around us as a people of God and as a church, uh, we need to understand that there's a, truly a real battle that rages uh, in the world today and uh, spiritual world and in the atmosphere. I would like to be a person that says everything's fine, there's no problems, all the head full and have fun. It just so happens that's just not where we are. Not at, not at least in the world that I live in. And uh, since we are seeing this continual clash of two kingdoms, my subtitle is From Transformation to Engagement. Well, last week we were going into transformation. This week from transformation to engagement. And I still call it Distinct Sides uh, Part 2. We have been teaching on how the lines are being blurred, how what is out there today is trying to destroy distinctions in all things. Uh, there's a redefinition of terms that goes along with the spirit of Babylon. When we start redefining what's good as evil and what is evil as good. So we are living in the era of, of uh, the dark side redefining terms. And so we just need to, I can say that, but we need to be on our toes uh, when this happens. And we need to understand what's happening as a prophetic people. <clears throat> now, here I'm going to, to begin with this particular uh, issue that's at hand. I will continue on, and I want to bring more understanding to future telling and future seeing. And all of this is to bring a greater definition to what the prophetic people of God are to be doing. I spoke or mentioned last week that if a, the term or a preacher standing behind the pulpit is really a contemporary term, more biblical term is a prophet supposed to stand behind the pulpit. And a prophet is a person who tells the will of God. And today we have more preachers, I'm, I'm using that term, uh, we have what's considered more as preaching, and I'm not dogging preaching here. I'm just saying it's under this disguise of preaching that we're into to everything is self-helps. In other words, I'm going to help you get a better job. I'm going to help you understand your wife better. I'm going to help you understand your spouse better. I'm going to help you with your finances. In other words, this is a church is a self-help place. I'm supposed to teach you how to live better and do all those things. I'm not against that at all. I think it, it all has its place. And as we walk in the will of God, I personally think all of that comes, comes together. Uh, but the church houses today, we, we have a tendency to turn into uh, just this uh, self-help programs. And there again, uh, and only God knows, we all need to do better. I'm not saying that we don't. And there's a time and a place. But the problem is we have negated at times uh, preaching as a prophet what the will of God is. And having, because believe it or not, church is not all about you. Church is just not all about me. It's not all about you. It is about us coming together to define the will of God. And on the path of God, we'll work out these things that need to be fixed in our lives. But the things that need to be fixed has now turned into the main item. Now, the reason I'm making a little deal out of this is for you to understand how our churches are sliding off. The churches have to start making a decision. Are we going to be in just helping everybody do better in our teaching and our messages, or are we going to tell what the will of God is? Now, just telling everybody how to do better is not very controversial. 
That one's not too controversial. But if you preach the will of God and teach the will of God and proclaim the will of God, it can be very controversial. And I'm not against teachers and preachers saying how you need to do better, okay? Is everybody with me on that one? What I'm doing here is I'm making a distinction between what comes out from behind the pulpit. And I'm not saying that neither one of them is bad or good. I'm just saying we need to have more emphasis on the will of God than we do on your will and making your will better and making you purdy and all this sort of stuff, right? So that, that's an issue that churches are going to have to decide. Now you can say, well, Alan, why are you making an emphasis on the will of God? It's because it's the lack of the will of God being proclaimed has gotten us where we are. It's the lack of it. And so it, it, it's lack of instruction of the will of God. And, and in the church houses today, for some reason, we have this idea that we're supposed to, to reason what's right and wrong, what's good and evil. All of that's been told to us in the Word, right? But we're in this place of reasoning, which is a place of judgment. That's the problem. It's a place of reasoning is a, a being in a place of judgment. So now let me uh, move on here. Now here's the issue, and I started touching on it last week, son. The issue is conformers versus what? Transformers. You remember the teaching of last week and did the a week before last little cartoon thing, Transformers or whatever you want to call it. It is the issue today is between the conformers versus the transformers. Now, as a church, we got to decide, and as a people, you have to decide uh, which is it that you're going to align with. This is a decision that has to be made by me, by you, um, by this church. The decision before us, are we going to be a conformer or one who's transformed? Two different people. This is two different people. Now, I'm going to go into it just a little more. And here we go. The battle is more about us finding the will of God. I've said this every teaching in this series. Then it is about finding our future, for our future is where? It's in the will of God. Everything's about the will of God. So, now let's watch it. Conformed or transformed, your choice. Now, we like to straddle the fence and say, well, there's a little of me that's going to conform, and there's a little of me that's going to transform. A conformer to this world and a transformer do not have the same style of battle engagement. A conformer and a transformer do not fight this battle the same way. Now keep that in mind. Here we go, Romans 12:2. Do not be what? Conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the reason it's important to be transformed, it's this transformation. As we go through this transformation, it's not then and only then can we know what the will of God is. A person who is not being transformed is a person who's trying to reason. A transformed person, this book illuminates itself to the hearer, to the reader, and you know that it's true. The reason I got born again is because the Holy Spirit visited me one day, and I knew I had something. I did not have something that I saw others have. All right, how did I see that? It's because the Holy Spirit came to me and showed me that I didn't have what others had. I was at a youth camp, and I noticed 
most of the people there were different than me and my two friends. They were just different. But before I came away that week, I was different. Something happened in that week. The Holy Ghost visited me and gave me sight to see that they had something that I didn't have, and I wanted it. I wanted it. So what happened there? The Holy Spirit revealed to me truth, and then I responded to it. And thank goodness I responded in a positive way. But I re responded. Nonetheless, my point is the Holy Spirit showed it to me. He showed it to me. Now, the Holy Spirit is the one that continues to show us. It was the will of God for me to get saved. And I agreed with the will of God, and I got saved. So the way that I knew what the will of God for me was is because the Holy Ghost showed it to me. So here we see that the, we got to be transformed, and the Holy Spirit is the one who changes us so that we can see the will of God. And I've noticed, I was talking to somebody this past week, and they were saying, well, Alan, you're just too hardline. You're, you need to, you need to, the church needs to be, to blend in more, needs to be more tolerant. And, 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 I, and I was talking, and I discovered something. I said, you don't have the Holy Ghost. Now, I told you last week I was going to be truthful. I said, you don't have the Holy Ghost. I said, because you can only understand what I'm saying through the power of the Holy Ghost. That's the truth. So if I'm having problems with understanding the will of God or can't hear the will of God, it's a Holy Ghost problem, not a God problem. That's right. Because the Holy Ghost is the one that's going to lead me in all truth here. So there again, we're on a quest of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray for people to get the baptism. I'm going to pray for them to get all kinds of... I w I'm probably even going to do it wrong, but we're going to do it till we get it. We're going to duck you in water. We're going to send you on your head. We're going to pray. We're going to cry. We're going to worship. We're just going to do it all till we get it. Amen. Because my Bible says if we go after it, he's not going to give us a fish. Right. right? So we're going after this relationship, close relationship with the spirit of the truth, because to me it's not optional going forward. And I am so not satisfied with my relationship with the Holy Spirit right now. I'm so unhappy. But I'm getting a little, I'm doing a little better. And I told you last week as I, Holy Ghost told me, all right, Alan, I want you to be more truthful. And of course, I'm first, you're, you're always offended, but you know, you, get, you tend to get over it, you know. I thought I was doing pretty good, and, and Holy Ghost calls you, well, put it plainly, he, he didn't say it that way to me. He's calling me a liar, right? I mean, yeah, come on. So, so I started watching how I said and how I talked, want to be more truthful. Have I perfected it? Not at all. But I told you last week, I noticed how I could tell when others were telling the truth. So a side benefit was I was in more relation with the spirit of truth in me, and it caused me to be able to see it in others. Amen. Right? So, so I'm understanding. I don't know the answers to everything, but I do know that part of the answers to having the faith of God is I've got more work to do in here yet. God just can't trust me with it. And I just don't blame him, you know. But I'm like, God, don't, don't you think the need of the people is greater than your lack of trusting me? <laughs> in which he says no. <laughs> so, so as pastor is preaching now, we're on a journey. But this is the whole church. Amen. We're on a big journey. So here we go. So we want to see, and it is possible to entertain and understand the will of God. We've got a ways to go there. Now, here's what I want to introduce. To be a conformer requires you to be tolerant. The, the, uh, I think I put up here, tolerant is the conformer's go-to word. Today, everything, the battle, the battle lines are, are you tolerant or not? That's, that's the battle lines. And, and then as a believer, you're like, well, yeah, I think, well, no, maybe, no way am I. Well, I don't, I don't know. 
So, the, but the go-to word is tolerant. Now, remember, I mentioned that we're in, in the day that words are being redefined. And so, so if, if you're, it's in, I was in this conversation last night, it, that, that to, to be tolerant, everything, uh, Christians today and Christianity today, the church is being split, those that are tolerant and those that aren't. Yeah, are, are you tolerant or are you not tolerant? That's where it's being split. The church is being split. Right at this point, I'm not worried about losing the world. I'm worried about losing the church. Because, because the issue is, and what we're being confronted with, are you tolerant or not? So all of a sudden, when you enter this battleground of tolerance, and, and, and as I was in this, this discussion, I, I noticed something. That the term tolerant is taken on a divine definition. Some, somebody somewhere sometimes has set the word tolerant up as the absolute expression of perfection. Are you, are you with me? I mean, a lot of things I'm not, I'm, a lot of things I'm not tolerant. I'm not tolerant of snakes. I have no toleration. Just don't, just don't have any. Now, the reason I said that was for this reason. The word tolerant has taken on almost a divine definition. Well, we're tolerant. It's a good thing I can't turn a rod into a serpent. I'd throw one down. I say, all right, now let me watch you. You know what I'm saying? Good thing me and Moses aren't a kin. But, but that's, the de that's what, or are you tolerant or not? So we got this badge, I'm tolerant. You tolerant? I'm not tolerant. Is your church tolerant? Oh, yeah, we're tolerant. We love everybody. So the word tolerance has been tied with love. So the church is at a dividing place today. Are you going to love everybody and be tolerant, or are you not going to be tolerant? You're going to be them people haters. That's, this, is, this is what's being, being set up. So as I think about that, tolerant is, uh, is the conformers. Now remember, there's a difference in a transformer and conformer. Conformers go word to conform you is tolerant. It means showing willingness to allow the existence of opinions or behavior that one does not necessarily agree with. Now that seems, I mean, that's, that's, I'm fine with that, that definition. It means showing willingness to allow the existence of options and behavior that one does not necessarily agree with. Now, in the fallen world that we're in, in a free world, it is of necessity to allow those that disagree with you an opportunity to speak. It's called, it's called debate. Debate an issue. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's necessary to, to debate issues. That's, that's not wrong. That's the ability to live in a society in a free world where different points of expression can be, can be expressed. There's not a thing wrong with that. It means showing willingness to allow the existence of opinions and behavior one does not necessarily agree with. I have no problem if, uh, uh, if someone says, uh, uh, Alan, I'm a man, but I want to be a woman. I, I, honestly, I don't have a problem with that. If, I, if, I'm, if I'm going to live in a world that I can be a man, I have to allow you to say that. Doesn't mean I have to agree with it, Right? But it just means, do, do I allow you? Yeah, I allow you to say that. Yeah, I, I do. I don't want to live in a world, nor a country, that you're not allowed to say that. Now, here's our problem, church. It used to be we had so much of the Holy Spirit in the churches of America that it, was saw, it would hold the country. We're losing the relationship with the Holy Ghost, so we're losing our influence. If sin's abounding, it's because the Holy Ghost is not being represented properly. That's all. So somewhere or another as a church, we got to own where we are. We need to quit blaming the devil for everything. We, he'll take all we'll give him. 
but which somebody needs to hold and we need to hold and take responsibility for what we're seeing around us. That's, good. That's, right. That's true. I'm being a prophet. I'm just telling you the will of God. Now, so that's, this is what the word tolerant here means. So here we go. The conformer redefines the word tolerant. So if the, if the conformer redefines it, what does it sound like? New meaning. To tolerate sin and to cancel righteousness. It's called cancel culture. And we're, we're just going to cancel cancel you and push you out of society. I can't even get a good debate with a conformer. They just around and walk away. They ain't going to talk to you. You're canceled out. You're not here. Did you say something? Has anybody felt that in conversation lately? It's out here now. It's called the cancel culture. We just, well, I'm just, uh, okay. You just, you just, I'm, you're not here. You're, you're just not alive. You're not around. So the new definition to, to, toler, to tolerant, the new meaning is to tolerate sin and to cancel righteousness. That's not the correct term of tolerant. The correct term of tolerant is that you allow for both sides to be there. Does anybody see the shift? Does anybody see the move? So today churches are at a place that they're trying, are, are we tolerant or not? Well, if you're tolerant, you've got the love of God. And if you're not tolerant, you have the hatred of Christianity, of historical value. That's, right. That's what's in front of us. Now, I don't want to leave you here. Let's move on. <clears throat> the battle exposed. Now, I believe that this is a battle plan to the enemy. I want to expose it this morning. You test it. I want to expose it. Here's what's happening. <clears throat> Here's the battle plan. The dark side has created a fake battle. Now, here's how he's done it. The dark side versus the religious spirit. You see, if you're sitting here and if you have the Holy Ghost in you, I could say, let's go to battle, and you're going to feel like, I don't feel like going to battle. And the reason you're not going to feel like going to battle is because the battle that's going on is the dark side's calling a battle with the religious side. And it's going to fail. Religious side's going to fail. Dark side knows it. Because religious side won't hold water. Has no power. None whatsoever. Now, Someone with a religious spirit has head information, but not heart transformation. You got head information, but not heart transformation. There again, I told you what made me believe in salvation. The Holy Ghost come upon me, gave me revelation of truth, and I chose truth. Holy Ghost did that, come upon my heart, convicted me, made me feel bad. That's right. Didn't fluff me up. Made me feel real bad. Like I heard Trevor say, I felt like I was dangling over hell for 24 hours. It hits your heart. It's a heart thing. Now the reason if you're sitting here today and you don't really feel like you're part of this battle is because I'm telling you the battle that's being called by the dark side is between the dark side and the religious spirit. And the dark side knows it'll win. So what's happening is those with head knowledge of Christ are being, uh, they're tolerant now. Well, let's tolerate uh, uh, all sin. Let's tolerate it. Now, let, let me say this to you. I'm going to hurt your feelings right here, okay? The reason we move into tolerant persuasion is because we're trying to cover and defend the sin in our own life. Now that's just the truth. You're tolerant 
because you're wanting God to tolerate your sin. So you're going to tolerate everybody else. It's just love covers everything. Now, I just told you the truth. So when I yield to the tolerant spirit and not the Holy Spirit, I know I need to check my own life for sin. Okay, I know you, you appreciate that. You're welcome. Here we go. Now, the transformed ones. Here's the transformed ones. I think that's as hard as I get, so we're going into happy hour now. Okay. <laughs> the transformed ones are to represent Christianity and not a religious spirit. Now, the dark side's trying to make Christianity out to be a bunch of people haters. And so those in, in the church that do not want to be seen as a people hater are being tolerant. Now, I'm going to show you how it works psychologically and spiritually here. The transformed ones, ones with a trans transformed heart, are to represent Christianity and not a religious spirit. Now listen, church. I'm not saying we're there yet. But Christianity needs a representative. Now here's how we do it. Here's how we can do it. The dark side will lose to the transformed ones, so it has picked a fight with the fake. Do you get it? You got it. That's what's happening. I don't want a religious spirit representing me. You say, well, Alan, this, the army's going to be small. Well, have you read your Bible lately? God will run off a crowd. Now, I, now I'm not trying to say that that we're special because we're not, but the transformed ones are. Those are the transformation has happened to their heart. And these are the people that can do, that can do the faith of God. I've got faith in God, but I want the faith of God. Well, our hearts have to be transformed to carry. Now, just because I'm not fully transformed or this part of my heart hasn't been transformed doesn't change the truth. The truth is we want to carry the faith of God. And the enemy, the dark side, doesn't want to battle that one. Now, we're not quite ready for the battle either. I'll be honest with you, we got some catching up to do quick. But our transformation of our heart, we need to be... Re I, the greatest way to get to a transformed heart the quickest is, through, is understanding repentance is your best friend. You're going to have to deny your, you're going to apologize to yourself so much for being an idiot that, that you're not going to know what to do. We're going to be transformed. We're going to be changed. We've been born again, but transformation process is being too slow. Now, here we go. What is the difference in a conformed person and a transformed one? A true transformer carries both messages, tolerant and intolerant. I'm going to show it to you. Now, here's what happens. Here's the reason there's some confusion in us. A transformed person. Now, here I got, and what I'm fixing to lead you in, if the Holy Ghost isn't here with me, I'm sunk. You probably won't let me ever speak again. And I'll understand <laughs> But I'm banking on this crowd has got the Holy Ghost, and you can hear, at least test what I'm saying. A transformed person, as you see, the conformed side is trying to make you make a choice between tolerant or intolerant. I'm telling you, a true transformed person carries both of them. You don't defend, say you are or you're not. You stand up straight and say, yeah, I carry both of them. I don't choose sides. You remember the first teaching? The three sides? The ch if, if there is a side chosen, it's God's. That's right. So a transformed heart is God's will. It's His perspective. Now here we go. 
It's in 2 Timothy. I've read it a hundred times. Here we go. Preach the Word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Doesn't look like to me that that's too tolerant. Rebuke, you can't swallow that and make it sweet. You just can't do it. Rebuke means the Word of God's not tolerating your sin or where you are. That's what it means. So on one standpoint, it looks like that as Christianity is very intolerant. I'll give you one more. 1 Corinthians. But now I'm writing to you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of brother if he is guilty of sexual immorality or greed, or is an idolater, reveler, drunkard, or swindler, but not even to eat with such a one. Pretty intolerant. A bunch of people haters you. Very intolerant. Now remember, a transformed heart will carry both. Now, here we go again. A true transformer carries both message and messages tolerant and intolerant. Here we go. Ephesians 4 2. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Amen. It looks pretty tolerant to me. Amen. Right? Pretty tolerant there. You're going to humility, gentleness, right? We went from not eating with somebody to being gentle. With patience, bearing one another in love. There's the love word. Eager to maintain the unity of the... Eager. That means you work hard at maintaining the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Let me try one more. Yeah, Jesus has got to mess up our day. And, and as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. And yeah, it looks pretty tolerant to me. Now are you with me? A true transformed heart carries both. God's expecting a lot from us. He's expecting us to have a little bit of a brain, a little bit of a heart. Why? Because He's created us to carry both in the same heart. Now, there's a reason for that. One reason is the human mind has to make comparisons. It's the way we operate. You got good and evil. You got up and down. You got right and left. It's the way the human psyche reasons. It's always reasons between two extremes. When you come up, up with an opinion, you'll come up with an opinion between the two extremes that you have experienced, and then you think in the middle is what's right. It's just the way human reasoning is, and it's the reason you can't use your human reasoning to come up with truth. It's always a comparison at best. So here Jesus says, anybody's got to... No sin, throw the first stone. Other verses we read, don't even eat with somebody. Does anybody see tolerant and intolerant? Now, all right, let's move on here. How can we carry two messages? The way we can carry two messages is because we have to keep the main thing, the main thing, as Peter Lord used to say, we've got to understand what's going We carry two messages. So you see, the conformers are trying to get us to choose between tolerant or intolerant. In, in other words, a transformer, I don't have to show up for that fight. I don't have to show up for that fight. Are you tolerant or intolerant? I don't even have to show up for that fight. I'm being called into an encounter, but, but think. But the, game, the rules are being set just by the mere invitation. Tolerant. Are you tolerant or not tolerant? Well, all of a sudden, the next thing we do is try to defend, well, am I or am I not? 
because the dark side always calls you in to a battle, and it'll define the parameters of the battle before it begins. And it knows you're going to lose before you start. Is anybody, there again, you got to catch it. So how can we carry two messages? Why does God have us saying to rebuke in one minute and to fight for unity the next? And if you don't have sin, cast the first stone. Here's what's going on. We are in the redeeming business. That's the reason we see sin on one side, right? And we're tolerant on the other side. Now I'm going to give you another one here. Jesus is the redeemer of mankind. So Jesus has called us to be his agents on the planet. And as agents on his planet, he lets us see the two extremes. Now, let, let, let me say it to you like this, perhaps. We tolerate because of grace, and we are intolerant when it comes to our mission. Does anybody get that? I'm going to read it again. We tolerate because of grace, and we are intolerant when it comes to our mission. We're in the redemption business. So when it comes to uh, people in sin, we issue the grace of God. But we're on a mission that we don't stay there, right? So can you see why we are tolerant and intolerant? We carry the same, we carry them both. We don't carry one or the other. And so, and, and there's a reason that we're carrying it that way. Jesus said it like this. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth uh, is given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. He promises to be with us always when we're doing what? Taking the gospel to the world. So we're tolerant with the grace of God to bring people into the truth to redeem them. That's the reason we are capable of both. And we operate in both. Has everybody got that one? All right, I'm going to move, move it on here now. We must carry spirit and truth. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and what? in spirit and in truth. Grace is carried through us by the Spirit. Grace is done by the Spirit. Our mission is truth. Got it? Grace is issued. Truth. We will not compromise. Now, we must allow the Spirit to guide us into the truth of God's path and His future. Now, as we're moving on, and as I know what I've said today perhaps has been somewhat challenging to some of you. The only thing I ask you to do is to test it. Test it against the Word of God. Test it against the Holy Spirit of God. I want, my job, I feel, is to let the church know what's happening before our very eyes. My job is to point it out. And I'm just saying the main divide today is tolerance. Just remember, if you receive it, that you are both. You are tolerant and you're intolerant. Amen? Amen? I'm going to stop right there. So if you would stand, and I'll pray for us. Lord Jesus, we love you, and I thank you for today. And 
Thank you for the truth of your word. And Lord, you know our deal. If there's anything that I've said that's not of you, I ask and pray that your Holy Spirit will just strike it from our minds. And if anything that I've said that is of you, I pray that we would look at it. It would be put into our hearts that we might have the revealed truth of God. So, Lord God, be with us this day. Be with our pastor as he brings the word. Anoint him and have your way in this place this day. Let this be a church that is tolerant and intolerant. Let us be a church that carries spirit and truth. May the brokenhearted be healed, the sinful nature of man be healed, our bodies be healed, and let us have the joy of the Lord. And we'll sing it and we'll praise you like this. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.